There we go. Recording has started, everybody. We got it? Yeah. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the November Home PTSA meeting. Um, I'm Sarah Muslin, the president, and I'm calling the meeting to order. Um, just a few things I'd like to talk about are we didn't have a meeting last month. Um, we had an exec board meeting only, and that was because we were working on our grants. So a couple things since our September meeting that has happened, I'm not sure which way to look camera or for you guys, but I'll try to go both ways. Um, but September, we had our curriculum night, which was great. Um, and we had our auction, which we auctioned off a junior parking space and six graduation tickets. And I think we earned $1,250 from that, which was a great success, a little bit smidge more than last year. Um, but that was super. And then in October, we had our grant e-board me meeting, which I'll have Christina talk about a little bit more later. And that was at Jen's house, our treasurer, and that was a great meeting. Um, we had an open house here at Sea Home, which was really successful. We I'm had not more sure people many... at the open house, 160 families, which was five more than last year. And um, it went really, really well. So that was good. And we kind of sit at our table and helped direct traffic, um, met lots of new faces. And then we also had a new event with Groves. We did a joint community event, which was a tailgate at the Grove Sea Home football game. And that proved to be a success too. Uh, we had the Ahats pie people come and hand out pie and we gave out free pie and cider. And we're hoping to be able to do a couple more joint events with them just to um, create some community camaraderie. So that was super. Um, and then in other things that um, I wanted to talk about is we have some funding for a speaker to come talk to parents or students um, regarding topics of interest. And we would love to hear if anybody out there that's, that's listening has any suggested topics. We'd love to hear what you um, would be interested in. And also, Mike, too, if there's something that you feel would be you know, really great for the students to hear about, let us know because we'd be happy to help fund that. We don't have millions of dollars, but we have enough to <laughs> do something. Um, so submit your ideas. And some of the ideas we've had so far are suicide protection, social media, um, proper guidance on selecting AP classes, health and nutrition for sports. Um, those are the main topics people have talked about. And then another thing is we have become the Home PTSA, which used to just be PTA. And we've been tasked with um, adding students to our PTSA. So we are trying to come up with um, some ideas of how we can do that. Um, we were talking about reaching out to clubs and sports teams to ask for participation from a captain or a student rep to attend possibly two meetings per year. Um, and the benefits of a student for doing this is something different. Um, our benefits, and I know we have so many clubs and student council and everything else, so this is just another thing, but for people that don't want to do a regular club and they don't want to do a student council and they'd like to like have some something on their resume, um, we were talking about this. Um, the benefits would be being part of a new group and making recommendations to better the Sea Home community, kind of like student council, um, direct communication with the principal and the exec board, voting rights, volunteer hours, um, there's a scholarship called the Fran Anderson Scholarship that's given out to seniors. Um, it's kind of a hidden little thing that I didn't even know about until someone told me last year. And you can be a leader and make this position what you want it to be, and it looks good on your college app. So we're looking for somebody to kind of help us with that since we're all busy as well. If anybody would be interested in that, let me know. Um, and then another just a crazy thing, which actually I was talking to Andrea before, um, parents work, I know it's in the e-news somewhere, but I just wanted to clarify um, the how to report a midday absence. I think email would be the best, the see home attendance email for that. So the, the power school works, but um, if it's going to be something immediate, like not feeling well, the email is the easiest. It's, it's easier to search for our um, people working attendance. So if you put that in the email, they come to the desk saying, I'm not feeling well, mom slash dad slash guardian has emailed, we can just search their name and you know it, it is a little faster than the power school side. Okay, so power school if you know ahead of time. Correct. And email if it's that day. Yeah, I mean, you can do email whenever, okay. but okay. I find that you know power school does work 
best if it's a pre-arranged, like if you know that they're going to be out all day or you know they're going to be out four, five, six for a doctor's appointment and you know the day before power school, you know, you can preload that. But if it's like day of, I find that email would probably be the best choice. Okay, super. Um, and then next we have Robin Moten on Zoom and she is going to be talking about the advisory class um, writing center update. So Robin, you can take it away. Hi, thank you. Thanks everyone. Um, so uh, first of all, thanks to the PTSA for the grant. Um, I was thrilled and I've sent some pictures out. We've already used the outdoor classroom um, once and then it got cold. So immediately um, after we got the funds, uh, you know, they delivered they delivered the chairs and uh, and then the chairs were used. And so now it's getting a little colder, but um, but they're really cool. The kids and and you can see it. We set up in the courtyard. And so I think that would if you've got a bigger class, like if you've got 20 kids or so, um, that's really the only place, even though the chairs are super light and you can carry them anywhere. But the courtyard is, I think, the ideal place. But it's also the place where everyone can look out on you. So I heard from many students that are not in my Honors 10 class uh, for English that said, we saw you in the courtyard and we want to know how to use the chairs. So um, so that was that was very cool. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, we have a writing center now at Sea Home. Um, so I became sort of uh, uh, obsessed with this idea of a writing center about, oh, four or five years ago. And um, I had a colleague who worked at Skyline High School in Ann Arbor, and, um, and he had taken oh, a little over a decade to um, to to start their writing center, and it really followed a national trend where writing centers were popping up all over universities. So I'm I'm old. Um, I had a birthday last week, and I turned 59. And I have to say that out loud because I still don't believe it myself. So it's helpful <laughs> for me to just like embrace it. Um, but so I I went to college in the 80s and. We didn't we didn't have a writing center. You know, if you if you needed help with an essay, you went maybe to the professor, maybe if you're lucky. Um, and, you know, you kind of went to your friends and plenty of plenty of my friends and and people I didn't know in my dorms would come to me and ask for help, which should have given me a hint for my future career. But we won't talk about that. Um, so I we didn't have them, but within the past, I would say decade or so, maybe a little longer, universities um, have really been picking up having writing centers because I, I think mostly it's been a skill kind of disconnect when our freshmen go in. Um, are they're just they're just not doing what a lot of professors want them to do. So um every major university now has a writing center. And they have started spreading to high schools. So there is a, a national organization, the Secondary Schools Writing Association um, that you can become a part of. There are members of them, and there are several members in Southeast Michigan, not just Skyline, but I have to tell you, Skyline has, to me, has done it the best. And so when um, when Jeff Austin and I met, I, I really thought, gosh, this would be great at Seahome. And we tried to do it with at the time uh the current academic labs we still have academic labs and so we were kind of able to finagle the schedule a little bit and make it so one act lab had two english teachers and we've done it for math before as well and somewhat more successfully with math than with english we had a reading academic lab that went really well the writing academic lab not so much so we just dumped the idea just we didn't think about it until this year when advisory came along and I asked Mike like hey can we take once a month and no that's not nearly enough to do what you want to do with writing and the best thing if you're thinking this of course the best thing you can do for writing is be consistent in in what you're doing 
So, um, so once a month isn't enough, but I thought, hey, let's start with a seed and see where we can go. And um, Mike said, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. Um, and so we started in late October and had our first session. Our next session is coming up in November. So once a month on Thursday advisories, I have uh, three senior leaders, Leo Kim, Avery Allen and Vittorio Benvoni. Uh, and then I have 15 tutors, uh, all juniors or seniors that are really outstanding writers in their own right. And they're not just kids that have gotten A's. A lot of them are in, in AP classes, but some of them are not. Like um, I have a senior named Sean Conan who um, has taken AP, but he basically is a guy who kind of likes to write fantasy, like writing in the sort of boxed in style that that AP Lang and sometimes AP Lit makes you write in. He's not a fan of that, but he's still a really good writer and someone who's very conscious of using the language. And so he fit the profile of a tutor perfectly because what we're trying to do with kids is is liberate them a little bit. So not just not just telling them where to put a comma or how to use a semicolon, but just as important, getting them to feel more confident in their writing. And ultimately, what I would like to see are more of our students um, involved in applying to publications like Scholastic. Um, there are so many online publications, so many scholarship awards, so many opportunities to be published. And I, I really um, am trying to guide C Home in that way, C Home students in that way. Uh, so I think the Writing Center will help. But just wanted to, I just wanted to kind of drop by and let you guys know that that we are fully operational. And um, you know, if you're ever in the building Thursday during advisory, come down to the cafeteria and say hi. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. So what exactly do you do though with the students? What are they doing in the advisory writing hour? They're tutoring other students' writing. So you have to be, you know, to fit advisory period, what, what we don't want is everybody coming down just to say hi to their friends, right? That's not what we want use of advisory time for. So um, you have to be recommended by, right now, an English teacher. So let's say you have an, an assignment coming up. Um, if you were in my Honors 10 class, they had an assignment like the the that was due the day after, I think, or somewhere around that time in October. Um, and so if you have an assignment due or you've gotten feedback from an English teacher on an assignment that has just passed and you maybe you didn't get the grade that you want, even if you got an A and you want to just be better at writing, you have to get a pass from the teacher and then you have to give that pass um, to your advisory teacher, and then you can come down to the cafeteria and our tutors will work with you on ideas for improving your essay, um, in ways to improve your essay, and, um, and, and then also the grammar and some of the more structural things. So it's the kid's choice to go to this, not the teacher recommending the kid. You know, at the end of the day, we can leave the horse, but you know, it's <laughs> right. not a program like this that's led by students for students isn't going to work if we make kids go. Right. So, I mean, and, Got it. you know, it's going to, you know, our first session we had kids, and I think that the positive word of mouth from student to student is going to be more than Miss Mountain saying something or a teacher saying, you need to right. go to this because absolutely, as you tell teenagers the things that they have to do, uh, in my brief experience, that doesn't always make them want to do it. Absolutely, I, Mike, I agree 100. percent And um, and there's a stigma uh, around asking for help at you know at, at C Home. So if you do frame it in that way, as a matter of fact, we changed our language immediately, and we now call recommendations invitations. So you will be invited to come to a writing center session, and um, our our teacher Jeff Gonzalez helped with that and of course you guys know him from all his character education work so um that was that was a really great idea but yeah uh, at at see home it's it it's kind of you know the kids just they don't like us they don't like people knowing you know like oh I, I might need help with something they really they're very independent and they're very conscious of of how they appear so yeah it wouldn't work to just say go to the writing center it doesn't work 
How many kids did you have? About we had nine sign up. Now, unfortunately, I was I was gone for the day, and I had to come back. I was at the EAC for uh, for a meeting, and then I ran back for her advisory. And um, so some of those kids were mine, and the substitute teacher, bless her soul, would not let them out of my classroom without without me being there. So Which that is rare. Some of our substitute teachers that seem to. I know. I know. I can't can't be mad at her. Cannot be mad. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Appreciate the time. No problem, <laughs> guys. Yeah, have a great night. I appreciate everything that you do. Um, I I really do, and so many teachers do, and we don't get a chance to let you know. Um, but your work is is really fantastic. So thank you very much. Thank Robin. you, Robin. Thanks. Yeah, um, thanks a lot. Have a good Robin. night. Good night. Oh wait, can I ask a quick question? Oh sure, hi. Hi, can they be uh, invited by history? Because there's a lot of writing in that course, or just English? No, they can be invited by by any course teacher. Okay. We've had conversations with um, science, uh, and particularly Stephen Clare, the the science, the department head, and I. We we've talked about whether or not so someone who's struggling with science writing can benefit in the writing center. The mm -hmm. jury's still out on that one uh, because my kids tell me, oh, hey, if you don't know science, then being able to write is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know about that. I know. I know. And and I just, I, I'm, the jury's still out for me. I'm still processing that. But history, definitely. English, definitely. Math, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you guys. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Um, meeting minutes. Elena's not able to be here tonight, but our September minutes were posted to Facebook and sent to the e news. Does anybody have any comments about those minutes? We don't have to vote on them anymore. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then the votes and e-votes we've had since our last meeting was in, at our October exec board meeting, we approved our grants. Christina, we're getting ready, we're moving up to you. We'll get to you in a minute to talk about those. And then um, the treasurer's report, Jen, do you wanna chat a little bit about um, what we came up with? Yeah, yeah, no, happy to. And again, sorry, I'm not on camera or there in person. I'm uh, driving back to the meeting. Okay. Uh, so just a kind of a quick update from the Treasury side of things. So we've had a really successful year so far from a membership perspective. Uh, we have just over 400 members um, and those represent, you know, really families. Um, and so just over 400. But, you know, as a reminder, we continue to take uh, members all year. So there's no kind of deadline on that. Uh, and there's some easy ways to sign up, whether it's through the online uh, giving or through uh, Venmo. So that information's all um, comes out on the, the weekly newsletter. But so for over 400 is great, which means that from a total you know, PTA perspective, from just the dues alone, which are $25, uh, we've raised just over uh, $10,000 of PTA dues. A uh, piece of that, a little over 2,000, we send up to the MI Michigan PTSA. Uh, as required, uh, and so the remainder is left for the the school, you know, us to use uh, for the various uh, funding initiatives such as the grants. But as most of you know, our largest donation and money uh, comes from our direct donations that are you know given, and and you know there are suggested amounts, and you know some families give the suggested, and some you know give more, and any amount is incredibly appreciated and very generous, and we've really done well this year, um, certainly comparatively to, to where we were at this time last year. To date, our direct donations have been just around $18,500. And those dollars are exclusively for the use of grants um, for the teachers. So as, um, you know, as Ms. Moten just talked about, the chairs that are outside uh, for outdoor classroom use, uh, those were funded through a grant that was approved that we'll talk about in a moment. Um, but it's it's for the kinds of expenses that teachers um, have that are not otherwise funded uh, by the district. And so, again, we've been, you know, we've, we've had a nice year. We had budgeted around 21,000, so we're a bit short of the budget. 
But with that said, um, you know, we've, we're still doing pretty well and we usually see funds continue to trickle in throughout the year. So uh, if you've thought about donating and would still like to, that would, it's, there's still an opportunity and we definitely appreciate, and the teachers very much appreciate um, and anything that, that is able to be, to be used to help really accentuate their classrooms and their teaching and learning experience. Um, one other, I think, quick note, and, and then we'll talk about the budget and then move on. Um, reimbursements. So if you are, you know, whether you are, you know, buying something through, you know, as that's been approved by the PTA for, let's say, for example, the dinners uh, that we fund for uh, the conferences. So we, we pay to have the teachers get dinners for conferences or any other things that are PCA approved, PTSA approved, I should say, there is a specific <laughs> reimbursement form. And that form is located on the CHOME website in the PTSA section. And it should be right in the right at the top of it. Um, I will say one thing, I'm gonna be updating the form, but we've typically tried to pay using Venmo in the past. However, most of our funding this year actually came in through I guess what used to be called e-funds, but which was the direct donations uh, through the registration links. And so our Venmo funds are, um, there are not, this, it's not as plentiful uh, as it's been in the past. So most of our funds are sitting in a bank account, which means Venmo is not really able to be used for reimbursement. Mm -hmm. So if, again, if you're submitting for reimbursement, uh, please let me know if you'd like that via a check, which will come to you in the mail or via Zelle, which is kind of like Z Venmo, but goes right to your bank account. Both of those are, um, are the best ways to get funded at this point in time. And then finally, we did put the budget, uh, the PTASA budget uh, up on the, P the C Home website. It has to sit for 30 days because uh, we want to make sure that we have the opportunity for anybody in the community or from the school to have uh, any questions or responses with regards to that. It has at this point sat for 30 days without any commentary. Uh, and so I think we will be at some point in this meeting approving, uh, moving to approve the budget. But I will say if there's ever any questions or if anyone has any uh, thoughts, concerns, anything with regard to what's been posted, please feel free to reach out to me directly and I'm happy to walk anyone through it. Um, but we are past the commentary period, so that will be posted. And then we do have to submit that to the Michigan PTSA uh, as part of the, um, you know, just as being a part of the, uh, the overall state PTA uh, group. So I think that's everything that I have on my list. Did I miss anything since I'm not looking at it? Is there anything Perfect. I missed? I missed actually putting on here to approve the budget, the biggest thing of all. Um, so as you, as Jen said, I need a motion to approve the budget that was online. Would anyone like to motion to approve the budget? A motion. Second, anybody? I'll second. Thank you. And uh, the budget will be approved for 2024-25 school year. Yeah, sorry, Paul. Oh, I need to vote. Everyone vote. Sorry. <laughs> Aye. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Okay. Approved. Thank you, Andrew. Sorry. What would I do without you? No. <laughs> um, I did put, um, just for everybody, I did put the ch um, in the chat, I put the file, the form that um, Jen was talking about um, from the website, if anybody wants to grab it. But um, it is, um, I'll just share this real quick so you guys can see. But it is, this is the PTA page. You can see this is where you can find the new meeting link here, all of our social media. Um, but here, the PTSA financials, here's the check request form that she was talking about. And this is the picture awesome. of the thank you. I was talking oh, thank about. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun. So, yeah. Anyway, Good I put question. that in the chat. Uh, on the the number of uh, um go back to that the agenda real quick. Yep, I'm going there. And you said there's 402 families that uh is, is that in line with the past few years? Shy more less? Same thing with the teachers? Do we know? Oh, thank you for the uh, about the teachers. So it's a little it's a little bit more than last year. It's a little bit below the year before. Um, it's in line. I mean, I think that's it's. <laughs> It's I, it's not exceptionally high, but it's certainly not the lowest we've been either. So um, it's a good, it's definitely a good turnout. 
Um, it's, a, it's a good number of families. Uh, which is, you know, I think is great. Uh, we'd love to see every one of our families be a member, but obviously, um, you know, that that would be, you know, that that would be a, a stellar year, but uh, definitely a, a decent, a decent amount. Um, in terms of teachers, um, you know, we have not, we had about, we had 17 teachers so far this year uh, pay their dues towards the PTSA, and which we've not we haven't enforced it as much in the past, but we have certainly more so this year in order to apply for a grant, uh, a teacher does need to be a member of the PTSA. That is a state requirement. And so uh, we have enforced that this year and everybody who did apply and was given a grant did in fact become a member. So of course, we'd love to have even more teachers um, be a part of it, but as you know, certainly 17 is a good start. And how many families do we have at the school, roughly? Uh, I know the kids we have, but it's really hard to estimate yeah, right. that some families have one, some families right. have three. I mean, yeah. Seahome about, has about 1,200 students. If we want to guess, every mm -hmm. family has, but some of those families are IA only, so I don't know if they join our PTA. Yeah. I mean, okay. conservatively, maybe we have 800 families, so we have captured about yeah. half. Yeah. We have more than 17 teachers, but <laughs> I know that I was presenting that. Out. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad about that. <laughs> Me too. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure that's not the only reason why they join. <laughs> so there's 17 grand. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Any more questions on that? Nope. nope. Okay, you. Mike, you're up for the principal's report. Wonderful. So um, quarter two has started. So if you have students who have quarter classes, those have switched over. Um, a lot of our quarter classes are either coming out of English 12A, uh, PE, Stuco, uh, Art, or Academic Lab. So that's an exciting time for, um, so if you have kids who are in quarter classes, those have begun. If your kids are in the full semester classes, the change of the quarter doesn't do anything per se. Um, the teachers were asked to make sure that everything on PowerSchool was updated, so you have a realistic understanding of what it was. But um, like when I went to see home, quarter one was a grade, and then quarter two started over. And that is not how we are running it. So you know, you have the opportunity that if you're missing assignments from quarter one, you can still get those in because we're not you know segregating between quarter one, quarter two. So all of the semester one is about 80% and then the final will be 20%. So um, that's exciting um, and we have some class changes. Um, this is kind of like that switch over. We have three seasons, uh, you know, in sports and things. So we have a couple, we were talking before the video started. Um, water polo will, the boys water polo is having the states this weekend, girls swimming next weekend. Uh, and when those two events are over, our, our fall sports have finished and our winter sports are starting. Uh, our first boys home basketball game happens to be against Groves on the oh. 6th of December. So um, that's exciting. And, and with that, musical auditions start this week. Um, so we are doing Legally Blonde here uh, so that Wizard of Oz just finished at Derby and now we're the high school here will start. So that's um, exciting. Um, I see we have coming up, I don't know if Katie gets or a student rep is here. So I will talk a little bit about uh, we have You Matter Week. Uh, our theme this year is Maples Never Walk Alone. So that is the week of November 18th to the 22nd. Um, Monday, we have Ciders and Donuts in the pool lobby for the kids. Um, we have our gratitude chain that we are creating throughout the day. Uh, and then during lunches, we will have cafeteria. And by the, yeah, in the cafeteria, we'll be doing something fun. That we haven't decided exactly what that is. Tuesday, we have yoga in the new uh, auxiliary gym during advisory. Um, we also have a coloring contest during advisory and we have a buddy photo booth at lunch. Wednesday we have teacher TED Talks in the auditorium. These are very popular with the kids and with the teachers to kind of bridge that gap and for the teachers to talk about who they are as people because you know we don't sleep at school and we have <laughs> families and lives and interests. Um, Thursday we are bringing in therapy dogs from the uh, Beaumont will be here um, and we will have sponsored snacks during both lunches here in the media center. 
Um, we have a eighth grade visit. It happens to also be on Thursday from 12 to 2. And then Friday, we have our student TED Talks that are led by the little in the little theater. And we are having a door decorating contest that the winning, each grade has a winning um, opportunity. And of course, what do you win? Pizza party. Pizza party. Because that's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for the kids. So um, that's something exciting going on. And, um, you know, speaking of advisory, you know, this is our, uh, this is our first year with advisory. It was something that a lot of other Oakland County high schools have. Um, the way that the advisory is set up, um, I know that it, it it is not like X Block, and that is a change. So I know I have a lot of people who, you know, they would like their child to be able to leave advisory and go see Mr. Bruns or Ms. Feliciano or one of their math teachers, and that is not currently the way that advisory is set up, though. This advisory, this is a one-year letter of agreement with the teachers union, so we will be evaluating on how what went well and what was different. Um, I'll be very transparent for people who watch this video. The seniors have not bought in to advisory as much as the ninth graders have. I mean, an advisory, in, in, in my mind, when we start talking about this, this is a place that doesn't give you a letter grade that you have a teacher that you can connect with for over four years. So if you, if you talk to kids, the teachers that they really build connection with, are people like Mr. Seabor, who they have for band all four years, or Mr. Humble and choir, or um, you know SJ and orchestra. You sometimes hear from the flex kids that have the same teachers for four years. Um, but especially under trimesters, where classes were 12 weeks long, kids, we have the data from our climate surveys, the kids weren't making those connections. So one of the big things is this advisory time is it's they're grade specific. So those freshmen will be together, those 18, 19 kids with that teachers for all four years. and. We're already seeing, you know, dividends from that, from having a place that if you need to talk to someone, you don't have to worry about this teacher's giving me a grade in math or English or social studies. Um, it also opens up opportunities, like speaking of Tim Seymour, you know, he gets to know his kids really well. He gets to know a very small group of kids really well. So his advisory class is full of kids that he might never ever have met if they weren't part. Or our LRC teachers in special ed have general ed caseloads. So they are getting to meet kids that they probably would have, never have taught. Um, so, you know, I, I have my students who don't love it and I've had my students that do love it. And, you know, I think it's a it's it's a work in progress, but I'm very happy with, you know, how it's going. Great. Um, and that's, yeah, kind of everything that's going on. Um, you know, as we move forward into uh, quarter two, you know, um, we would really like the kids to come to school that half day before Thanksgiving. Um, I know that people have family, um, but we would really like them to come. I will be here. Your teachers will be here. Um, it is a day of school, um, so we would really like to see you there. Thank you. Um, anybody else have any questions? Am I? No? Okay. Katie, do you have any website updates? I put you on there just yeah, in case. I can just think uh, we were following the school board election pretty closely. I attended both candidate forums. Um, I think probably everybody knows um, this, um, the, of the three seats that were open, uh, Hokumar, Ras, and Tijani uh, were, received the highest number of votes. Um, it's really important that we just continue to raise awareness when there's elections because um, uh, the person who got like their third place um, received a couple thousand less votes than the person, the people that got first and second. So that I think there's voters out there that aren't familiar with the candidates still. So mm -hmm. just from our side, we can just keep working hard to make sure that everybody knows their vote counts and to um, try to point people to resources where they can find out um, about the candidates. And then on the advocacy side, I'll be looking um, over the next few months to the Michigan PTA and the National PTA for any calls to action or like advocacy alerts. And I'll be sure to pass those on to you guys. Right now the Michigan PTA doesn't have any like urgent calls to action where they're asking people, that would be like if they ask us to write letters to senators to, you know, if there's gonna be changes to school funding or something like that. Um, so we're gonna keep an eye out for that and I'll let you guys know. Okay. Thank you. I have one thing we've spoken about it. There is a bill floating through the state legislature about banning cell phones at the schools, like taking that away from, really? taking that away as a local decision to being a state mandated decision. 
Um, it has not picked up a lot of traction. Um, and while I I believe cell phones are a problem in schools, um, and, and Vika, if you're watching this, I know I'm, Mike Wicker's opinion, not necessarily <laughs> the opinion of Vermont Public Schools, um, is I just I think we could definitely do more with it. I'm just not sure if the state telling us how to do it is is my favorite thing that they could do, but it is something that we are watching. It's something that I'm actually working with our student voice group, you know, to see how they feel about, you know, cell phones in schools. If you hear about, you know, the the, the pouches that kids have to put their phones yeah, in at the yeah. start of the day and, you know, is that what we want and is that what our community wants? And as I will be honest, half the time a teacher talks to a kid about being on the phone, they're like, I'm texting my mom. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, well, you can do that at lunch or during passing time or things like that. Yeah. It is definitely, um, I don't know, I haven't seen the governor's opinion on it. I'm not sure she'd sign it even if the House passed it, but there is a bill being floated around that would state mandate no cell phones at school. Okay, well, because I, I want my daughter to be able to have that case of like a shooting or emergency or something, and I want her to tell me right away. So they're saying like... Yeah, I mean, I again, it, no? it, it's so abstract right now that, yeah. but yeah, that it would, not I mean, I that, just let up break a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I think that the the because there's as proposed there's different levels. I think the high school level would be they could have it on them, but it would need to be away and off during the school day. Right. Like I agree, it should be in the backpack or whatever, not on their desk. But I want to be. Or not in their hand the under the desk when they're supposed to be yeah, learning. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that, but I want it like where she can access it and she can keep it. Yeah. So I, I, I have not heard an update lately, but that is something that is being floated around the House okay. or Senate. I can't remember it's beginning. So. Okay. Um, next up is Christina, our grants coordinator. Do you want to give a little brief update for us? Uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, we had a wide variety of departments again this year including the English department, um, music department, world language, robotics, uh, social studies, science, uh, special services, a health class, student congress, so a math department even. So we had a good uh, selection of most departments this year submitting grants. We had a request for around 17,000. Mm -hmm. We were able to grant 14,253.52 cents. Um, some of the grants we were able to accommodate included the chairs we talked about earlier. Uh, let's see, the uh, robotics department, um, helping them going to worlds. Uh, some supplemental materials for the AP European history class, uh, a guest speaker that will be coming to the high school for the English department, um, the Birmingham College Fair, uh, the end of year luncheon and award ceremony for the CVBI students, um, the French competition entry fees uh, for French classes, um, some science kids, uh, some, some, uh, what am I trying to say? Some, uh, extra. Don't forget the, sheep. don't forget the sheep's brains. That's always my favorite. Oh, I haven't gotten that far on my list. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> some uh, added uh, supplies for the health class, the selfie booth for the student Congress, DECA and their uniforms and the two buckets of the sheep brains, which is very popular. Uh, <laughs> and then the GSA club. Uh, so a wide variety of ways that uh, funding was uh, spread throughout the school. Um, I think last year we also had quite a wide variety of uh, opportunities, but this year seemed to be even more uh, diverse, I, I feel. Thank you. Do we um, still have teachers that need to submit receipts? Do you know? Yeah, yes. Um, there are some that have asked to um, submit post the deadline due to certain expenses not being incurred until later. For example, uh, the French uh, competition uh, happens later. 
Uh, and then there was a few others. And so we did go ahead and grant extensions for those simply due to the timing uh, and the needing for the receipt to be okay. funded. So that's fine. But there aren't any that we've not heard from the teachers at all. Like last year, I know we had a couple that we didn't hear anything and they requested them and they were still hanging out there at the beginning of this year. We're still good. I believe so. What I um, how I'll go through and do a quick inventory to make sure I think we've heard from every single teacher, either from a, having a, actually submitting the receipt or asking for an extension to submit the receipts due to timing. But I'll confirm that before our next meeting. OK, super. Thank you. I think the ones from last year were the late funded late, later in the year funded. They weren't from early funding. OK. OK, anything else, Christina? Uh, no, there was the um, wheelchairs, but that uh, that's complicated. And yes, I, received, is. I received emails. We can talk offline about that. <laughs> yeah, so other than that, and that's not really officially a grant request. So other than that, we haven't received any late uh, requests or anybody um, looking for anything peculiar or anything like that. OK, thank you. And lastly, um, committee reports. I talked to um, Emily Johnson and Amanda Sobowski. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but they're in charge of First Fridays this year. And we've had incredible contributions this year, um, more so than last year. And she's getting everything she needs for every month. Or they're getting everything they need for every month for the teachers. So that'll be great. We'll at least be able to you know, hit every single staff member this year, um, which is awesome. It's guys that, you know, they're adults and they get so excited. So you know, <laughs> it, is, it is a really great program that PTSA puts on. Good, thank you. Um, and then we also have the monthly treats and I got a note from Sandy Boyle and Chris Glazier. They're working on that and doing a great job. Thank you very much. Um, and they have let me know that Funds are coming in slower this year, but they think it's because of social media, because our social media hasn't been as planned. Um, we've switched social media chairs, um, and Andrea is now taking that over. She volunteered kindly to do that because Amal was overloaded with real work. So um, thank you, Andrea, for taking this on. So the posts will be more frequent now. We will be able to you know, broadcast more on e-news and Facebook and Instagram. So if you haven't seen posts, we apologize, but we're really, really busy. So you'll see more posts. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say thank you to was to Melissa Casiba and Becky Noel for the conference dinners. Um, we heard that the conference dinners were yep. Chipotle and everything was great, right? Everyone loved it. Teachers are happy. Okay, so thanks to those two. And we'll do the December conference dinners as well, and then you'll take the next batch. Okay, correct. Okay, awesome. So thank you everybody for volunteering. And that's all that I have. Does anybody have any questions or anything you guys want to discuss? No? House bill, I looked it up what you said, what you saw was House Bill 5921. If you want to jot it down so you can check. Yeah, okay, and Bika's very on, on top of that. Okay, anything? Anybody else? Um, just on the social media part yeah. of it, um, just to let everybody know the Facebook groups are getting more active. Um, there was a, a, an issue with um, letting not letting people into the 2028 group. Um, I cleaned all that up. We've added admins, so we've added um, uh, the parent reps um, for each class as admins to some of the grades. So. You should see just overall more community, more posts, more questions being answered um, on Facebook, and then more posts on Instagram as well, just getting the word out there um, a little bit more, um, just so we can have a little bit more communication um, rather than just these meetings. <laughs> And just so everybody knows, there are, in case, I, it took me a while to learn this as a freshman parent, but there are parent reps for each grade, and those parent reps now have control over the Facebook pages, like Andrea was saying, and the Instagram pages. So if you, as a parent, have something that you need posted that you feel is um, beneficial to the whole school or to the class specifically, you can get a hold of those parent reps and they can post what you need posted as well. Yeah. Yeah, no? Okay. Motion to adjourn.
Leading? Second? <laughs> okay, Katie first, Kim second. Thank you. Have a great week, you guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank we'll you. We'll be in January, actually. We're off in December. So have a happy fall and holiday season. Thanks. So there's the next meeting in June. Set. Ah, oh, poop.